Hello, I'm here today in the Lisgar Gardens, which are famous for their camellias, just to do something a little different. It was beautiful outside, so I thought I'd do my video here. While traveling recently, I found myself a fun little notebook from Midori. And one thing I've learned from this review is that just because a journal is made by the same brand as other notebooks you own, the paper might not be the same. Hi, I'm Ruby from The Useful Journal. Like my video and subscribe to my channel to learn about a whole bunch of journals that you've probably been missing out on. Today I'm reviewing a Midori A5 coloured paper notebook. I will tell you a bit about the company, the features of the journal, the paper, you'll see my pen test and I'll talk to you a bit about the company's approach to environmental and social responsibility. Midori is a Japanese stationery company that changed their name to Design Fill Inc. in 2007 keeping the Midori brand and creating some other brands including the Travelers Company. I don't think Midori used the same paper in all their journals because the paper has tested quite differently from the MD paper used in their Travelers notebooks. Midori has a broad range of stationery items from staplers to stickers to stamps to various notebooks. Their products tend to be on the novelty side of stationery, but they do have a more serious range in the form of MD paper notebooks. The A5 coloured notebook that I'm reviewing today is made in Japan. The notebook comes in six colours. The cover colour follows through to the paper and even the dot grid. So if you look at the purple version, you can see that there is a purple cover, purple paper, and it has purple dots. There is a spiral bound version as well that has the same colour range and twice the number of pages. This notebook isn't shown on Midori's website, but if you search on Midori A5 coloured notebook, you'll find it on a range of online sellers' websites. I just happened to find it in a store in Vancouver, Canada, but I have seen it online in stores in Australia, the US and Europe, so it's around. Considering you're just getting a stapled notebook with a card cover, I suppose it could be considered a little pricey at 7 US cents per page. But you're not buying this journal for its value. It's a minimal output for a single notebook and you'll be sucked in by the colours that you can choose from, which is of course why I bought it. For the first time, I've bought a journal that comes with no packaging at all. I did buy it in a bricks and mortar store, and occasionally stores do remove the plastic wrap before they put it on their shelves, but they did have other journals in the store with their plastic wrap on, so I'm going to assume that this journal doesn't come with a plastic wrap. This is quite unusual for a Japanese product, as they are very fond of packaging and making things look pretty. The cover of the notebook is paper card and flexible. The cover is stamped in gold foil with a dot grid icon, then in writing it has A5 size, dot grid and made in Japan with the Midori brand printed at the bottom. There are some sale ticket details about the notebook on the bottom of the back cover. The page edges are plain and the corners are rounded. The notebook weighs 80 grams, has 56 pages and is 4 millimetres thick. It is bound with two brass staples, each 12 millimetres long, and the legs of these staples are a good length and nearly meet each other, so the pages look secure. The notebooks are all precisely folded with the edges even and matching the cut edge of the cover. As for all stapled notebooks, it does not lie flat when opened. The notebook has no closure, no pocket, no pen loop, no bookmark, and the only markings are the dot grid. 
The dot grid is very well aligned across the two pages. There are 29 dots across the page and 38 dots down the page, reduced somewhat by the big 12mm border at both the top and bottom of the page. The dots are very close to the middle and side edges of the page, making a spread across the double page a bit awkward in the middle. The dots are quite light in all the colours, but visible enough to see when writing. They are a minuscule amount, over 5mm apart, resulting in just under an extra millimetre by the time you get across the page. This isn't enough to bother you and doesn't affect ruler use. Midori paper is typically well regarded by fountain pen users. I got quite different results for this notebook than I did for my Traveller's Notebook Paper, which is by MD Paper, another Midori brand, and sadly the results weren't as good for this paper. But I didn't buy this notebook for the fabulous paper, I bought it because it had beautiful pastel paper and my idea is that I can use it as cutouts in my other journals without adding the bulk of really thick paper because this paper is only 80 GSM. This paper is a perfect ivory colour and I also bought the pink and purple versions that both have a lovely pastel colour. The paper has more tooth than the paper in Traveller's Notebooks, so it gives a bit more feedback when you're writing with a pen. It's quite similar to, say, a Stylogy notebook. The paper definitely isn't heavily coated. The paint in my watercolour test didn't swim around on the surface too much and dried much quicker than the Leuchtturm 1917 journal, for instance. This 80 GSM paper isn't impervious, but it's pretty good. Bleed through occurred with the Sharpie Ultrafine marker, the Stabilo highlighter, the drawing ink, although that may have been because I did more than one coat, and the Stabilo 0.88 pen was borderline. The ghosting is noticeable, but doesn't affect writing on the reverse side and can't be seen through more than one page. I have since done some more spreads in my journal and found that when I used mild liner highlighters to do decorative lettering for my future log, the pen did start to show through on the other side. So it's really a matter of choosing, using your pens lightly, not pressing too long on the tip of the pen so that it can soak through and generally just leaning towards those paler colours. Lead pencil didn't fully erase leaving a ghost on the page but for once all the whiteouts looked good. I love this colour ivory. The tooth and less coating meant the inks dried super quickly with my Pigma Micron pen drying in two seconds and no smearing when using a highlighter over it after 20 seconds. While there is no feathering, the pen stroke is on the broader side of normal for the pen. Watercolours worked okay but don't look fantastic which is pretty normal for these types of notebooks. On the upside, the water didn't pull into low points on the page and move the pigment to the edges of the pools and didn't bleed through the page. The pages wrinkle a bit, but not to the point of having to press your notebook flat afterwards. The watercolour results are bearable, but not exciting. Designfill provide a page on their website that explains their approach to environmental and social responsibility and what they're doing about it. Most significantly, they describe a shift to green power and LED lighting in their factories. Designfill has not yet taken the step of getting their paper certified under a sustainable forestry certification scheme, but that doesn't mean that their paper is not sourced from sustainable forests. A lot of Japanese companies have their own schemes in place and it may just not be an internationally recognised one. Designfill donate to a number of Japanese charities. They don't talk much about social responsibility and what they do on their website, but they do have a policy. 
I think the lesson here for me has been that just because the paper is made by the same company as another journal you've tried, it doesn't mean it's going to be of the same quality as that other journal. This is clearly a novelty product given its small size and its coloured paper options. Treat it as such and you'll enjoy using it. The paper colours are gorgeous. I do wish that there was a more serious journal with paper that performed better in these colours. I bought it with a specific purpose in mind and I'm going to enjoy it for that. If you found this review useful, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. See ya!